Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on our master budget and we will be working on the direct labor budget at this time. So remember what we have done so far, we have to start off in this way. We did the sales budget in order to know what we're going to sell. We have we sell. <laughs> we have to do that first. And then we did the production budget in, term, in terms of how much uh, units we're going to need to produce based on the sales budget. Then we did the raw materials budget. We need to do uh, these two budgets, the production budget, before we do the raw materials budget. And now we're going to work on the direct labor uh, budget. Notice, of course, we don't really need to do the raw materials before the uh, labor budget, but we do, however, need to do the sales budget and the production budget in order to determine how much labor it's going to, uh, we will need in order to uh, fulfill our obligations in the budgeting process. The direct labor is a little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward to my mind. So this is how we're going to take a look at that. We're going to start off with a similar area that we started off the materials budget, which would be that we need to have know how many units we're going to produce. Then we can see how many hours it's going to take to produce them. And then we can estimate how much it's going to cost per hour in order to produce these. So where are we going to get the production in units? Well, that's going to equal in July the number that we uh, determine in the production budget. So remember, the production budget tells us how many units we actually need, need to produce. And it's not equivalent to the units that we will uh, we think that we're going to sell because we had to go through this process to determine how many units we need to produce. And we came up with this 19586 for July. And that's where we're going to start for the direct labor budget for July. And we're going to do that same process. I could copy it across, but I'm going to just point to it for August so that we could see exactly where it's coming from a few different times. So it's going to be coming from the production budget for August in this case. I'm going to hit tab. So there's that number, the 20,000. And then in September, the production, uh, the direct labor budget, we're taking this number from the production budget being the 20,500 units that we will be producing. Then, of course, what are we going to need to know in order to determine our budget for labor? We're going to need how many hours does it take to create one unit? And note that uh, there are some conversion problems. Sometimes we pay people generally hourly. If a problem gives you minutes, <laughs> then uh, you're going to have to convert to hours most likely. And note that that conversion can be a little bit trickier than you would think because, uh, you know, there's 60 minutes in an hour and whatnot. So just if you if your problem happens to have minutes in it and doesn't give you hours but gives you an hourly rate, just make sure that you're going to have to perform that conversion. Here we're saying that the uh, labor hours required to finish a, a unit are 0.5 or half an hour. So it's going to take 0.5 uh, hours to make uh, a unit and therefore we're just going to say 0.5 here and 0.5 and 0.5. That's how, many, that's how much time it's going to take uh, in order to create, uh, make the units. Therefore, we're going to take the 19,586 times the 0.5 and enter. So that means that it's going to take 9,793. Now, again, you might want to ask, well, where are they going to come up with the 0.5? Obviously, a problem like this would have to give you the 0.5. Uh, in real life, we would come up with, with some type of estimates on how long it would take to create one individual unit. And, I, and there's going to be different theories on terms of how we'll come up with that number at, at a later time. Um, but a problem like this will generally give you that number. So we'll multiply that out for August. This is how many uh, units we need to produce times. It's going to take 0.5 hours per unit and tab. And then for September, we're going to take 20,500 uh, units times 0.5 per unit. So we now have the number of hours it's going to take for July, August, and September. And then we're going to multiply that times the labor rate. Once again, the, the problem is going to have to give you a labor rate here. We're going to say it's $14 according to the problem, 14. And once again, in real life, of course, we'd have to come up with the labor rate in some way as well. And it might have to be some type of estimate. So we're going to say it's going to cost us uh, on this estimation $14 per hour. So 14 and 14. Once again, remember that when we think about a, a problem like this, we usually are going to be given the uh, rate in hours. So if, if again, if, you, if it's a problem that's given you how many minutes it takes to do a certain task, you're going to have to do some type of conversion, most likely. And that will give us our labor in dollars. So that means that 
if we if it's going to take 9,793 hours, then we're going to multiply that times $14 per hour to give us the